Work in progress. When have you been coming up with the idea to make a series of books with the title Werk? I think since probably early 2000, when I started, when I discovered that I wanted more uh, from making books and what, how the book can be different. I think everyone was making perfect books and everyone wanted the book to finish and that's the end of the life of the book. Yeah. So I thought that maybe it's interesting uh, a work in progress uh, methodology in doing things is better. So therefore, for Work Magazine, it's always been work in progress to develop things along the way, to find things that were not done before, uh, to work in a manner that is in a way haphazard, in, in chaos, so that I could discover new things. Hmm. And um, so when I saw the first copies, you have shown to me in Singapore, mm. uh, I found out that some of them, when you open it as a reader, are self-destroying. So uh, with the action of the reader by turning over the cover and the pages, a new book sculpture uh, is coming up. Is that a, something what you have planned and foreseen, mm. or is it more um, a yeah, uh, creative accident? Uh, a little bit of both. I think uh, I, I wanted to create, the, the key word is I was actually imperfection that I was after. I wanted to create something that is in a way by the general term of definition in making books imperfect, you know. And the more I developed that idea, the more it, it seems that if someone else were to help me sort of make it more imperfect, it means to say that that particular copy of that book belongs to the individual reader, you know. So uh, it is a little bit of accident, but it is also a deliberate concept and idea that I wanted to push forward in terms of making my book. So therefore, if you will look at even the latest issue, there's still an action in which someone have to open the book signatures themselves. They will still have to, to put their own personal touch to it. And the book we did together two weeks ago, Werk number 30, is more or less uh, made out of garbage. So paper and materials which will be thrown away throughout the uh, printing process and production process. Was this the concept from the beginning? Are all the 30 volumes made out of garbage and yeah. recycling material? Yes, because I think in your the way you have done books, uh, in Steidl, uh, I feel that these are books, these are things that you will make ready. Most of the time, I think you would dispose them because these are the warm up printouts. These are things that are uh, only used to achieve the, what you call the perfect quality you want in printing. So the idea for me was to work together with you to, to investigate if, we, if this were not to be thrown away, can we consider this to be the concept and the finished product? Therefore, that becomes a stronger idea, you know. So, make ready now is no longer make ready as we have defined it. We have redefined make ready. We have make, make ready right now acceptable because in work 30, we have shown that it can be an interesting book object. It can be uh, uh, an eye opener because of the accident, because of the malfunction of the machine. We can create new things. So, make ready is no longer garbage which is ironic, you know. One question is, uh, why have you used a German word for the uh, edition of this book, Werk? I like Werk because it, it sounds like my company called Work, you know, and, but I thought W-E stand for like a collective word. It is we, in work, you know, so it is a collaboration. It is working together with people. It's always something larger than my, just myself. So I thought that that is actually quite a nice word pun in a way, you know. So we have we concerning the work, which is a good reminder that it's always collaborative, you know. Varak 30. Uh, the idea was born just by talking. We had made a few mm -hmm. sketches, mm -hmm. uh, but there was not really a serious uh, template for mm -hmm. the InDesign document. Mm -hmm. um, 
we were sitting in a train uh, and uh, within 15 minutes is my memory we had more or less uh, the concept together mm -hmm. and how can we explain to somebody that such a chaotically and uh, unexpected process leads into a, an exciting book well i, I think that uh, i felt that working so long as a designer you know uh, i realized that a lot of designers are thinking only in a sp specific format in which we wanted to achieve perfection and in the progress we asked a lot of questions trying to attain trying to go to this final destination of perfection. And I thought that was, that I've done that, I thought that was quite boring if I would continue doing my work in that manner, you know. So therefore I came up with this idea of maybe I should not try to design or create art, you know. Maybe I could create it just by, by the time and space that I talk to people. And because you have the facility, I know you can produce it. I know that we can just by talking, you know, I would be able to somehow get you involved and draw you in so that you can also give your part to it, right? So I, I never doubt that you can print a perfect book, but I was trying to ask you to make a book that is in a way very different from the pr normal process in which you are doing. So I just only created and facilitated just that environment. So it can just be our talking. You know, and I'm, I, I, the imperfection don't bother me. I mean, the, the colors not accurate, things don't bother me because that is part of the concept, you know. So I, and I thought that that way we could discover new things. And again, I think we, we quite uh, successfully able to complete that, achieve that, you know. So you uh, call this uh, process uh, reverse engineering. Mm -hmm. So, um, for my understanding, an engineer uh, is always eager to make a product, whatever it is, uh, and um, bring it throughout the production process to its perfection. Um, there's always another step to get a better surface and uh, mm. to better uh, quality of materials and so on and so on. And uh, at a certain point, the product comes to the end of its lifetime or the production cycle, and uh, then it's over and a new product is designed. And that's the endless uh, cycle mm. uh, of economy. And um, it uh, takes a lot of resources, uh, what we do not have any longer on this planet, and uh, it takes away uh, human creativity in to a product what at the end has to be thrown away mm -hmm. or is garbage. And here, reverse engineering, from my understanding, you, are, you come right away in the beginning of the production process mm -hmm. to a product which is already garbage. Yeah. Yeah, which I thought is uh, important. Uh, by definition, you have to reverse engineer engineering. I was just trying to reverse the entire process so that we can relook at all these materials that are being used to create design or, or art, you know. And I think that you are right that, that this, there are only limited resources. And if we do not create in such a way and redefine uh, uh, what design or art can be, then I think we are not really fulfilling, you know, our responsibility in our profession. So therefore, uh, in, in doing this, I'm questioning, yeah, we, we, we seek perfection, but at what cost is perfection, right? And, and because of the, the handmade things that I wanted in, in the books that I've, I've created, uh, I hope this life keep going, goes on, you know, and the, and the def redefinition of it of what aesthetics or beauty is in book design uh, can now be questioned and rediscussed, you see. So uh, I just want everyone to be conscious, really, you know. Uh, I, whether it be it an exhibition or be it a book or whatever, we do a lot just by trying to communicate work that we thought is the definition of beauty, you know. But we don't have that sort of luxury uh, for very long anymore. So we, we have to really find a new way to make things that have inherently beauty and personality, you know, yeah. 
For example, uh, Valk number 30 could be a model for the production of fashion. Possible, yeah. Which I think a lot of people are looking at old things being remade and then re represented, you know. Uh, on a, and, and because the market have been so commercial in, in just introducing new things and new things that I think the general population just felt that new things are the only way that we can, that could satisfy and sedate our desires, you know. And I'm saying that, look, we can have all these things that we, that is still exciting and inspirational, you know, but the way we do it, we should re-question it. And the way we do it, I think it's possible, you know. So, uh, work number 30 has been produced on our presses and in the bindery with a minimum of um, technique mm. and uh, with a minimum of uh, raw material. And at the end of the process there was zero garbage. Mm -hmm. And the few things what we couldn't use for the book made it into the exhibition, yeah, yeah. and uh, people were very excited uh, to see it. Yeah. Uh, is it also a model for creating a new type of art exhibitions or curating mm -hmm. in a new way? Yeah, it is because I think don't, those weren't thought of, but I, like I, you know, was trying to express that those material that we use, you know, within the limitation of time and resource. I believe that whatever material that are supposedly thrown away right now can be reused. So in this exhibition, they are being used to redecorate the room, you know. Uh, and those are the things not conceivable because in the beginning, most people think that I want, they want certain things and then they're very specific. This thing happens just by chance, you know. Uh, the binary sent over the bookcases, the cutoffs and all that. And, and all of a sudden, yeah, we can make an installation out of those materials. You know, so uh, or the printing plates that we that I put the prints on. You know, those those are the things that happens during the process. They were not sort of planned or conceived in the beginning. So I, I, I work in a sort of an organic at the moment sort of way, right? So, but the the motivation, the idea is not to use too much material out of my. I don't know better way to phrase it, the vanity of what I wanted to express about my work. You know, that I'm vain about it, I'm, I'm insecure about it not looking good or whatever. I'm not concerned about that. I'm more concerned about did I put in line a process in which I could use everything. And in return, this thing just goes on into the future uh, and, and someone would make something else out of it. And if more people do it, I believe we could save a lot of materials. Well, hopefully, you know. Um, I'm not 100% sure if everybody understands what is make ready mm -hmm. or make ready paper. So uh, when we start the printing process, uh, there's at uh, the end of the press a pallet with blank, mm -hmm. brand new paper, white paper. And uh, then it runs through the press and uh, the plates are getting their ink mm -hmm. and the ink is in the beginning of the printing process uncontrolled, delivered via the plate mm -hmm. to the paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the front of the machine where the good sheets should come out are at the beginning just bad sheets of bad quality, but that's relative. What is bad? Exactly. So I'm trying to say bad becomes relative, yeah. you know, because if you're only fixated on getting that perfect image, then those are garbage. But if I think those so-called, uh, if I'm not after the perfect image, I'm using whatever that is being produced at that point as that image, then I think I open a, a new door to a lot of, exp of, of for creativity. You see, so I'm, I'm not locked in to just one way to express my work. But I understand if there's a photograph that needs to be reproduced because the technique use is complicated, the colors have to be correct, it has to be only on the surface of, of a, a very sort of a specific paper. I completely understand there's always a, a part that requires those things. You know, but my world is not that. My world is not to do that. My world is to look at the process question that process, you know, question about 
our responsibility as, as artist and desi or designer and see that did we miss something, you know? It, because the word define beauty for us is like we think that women should be slim or people should be of this color or whatever. I'm, I'm asking the question that have beauty got to be defined that way? So moving to books, have book got to be defined that way? It's only coffee table book, respectable book. Can a beautiful book be a pamphlet, you know, a leaflet or just like a, a zine, for example, you know. So I'm constantly thinking about those things. So, but I'm, I'm not too particular about doing fancy books. I've never been my uh, aspiration. Hence, I was telling you that I didn't want you to spend money on it. <laughs> I want you to do the cheapest possible book together with me, you know. Don't spend money on it and see the result of that, you know. So in work number 30, I think that the value of the book itself uh, it looks far more expensive than, than the money we put in to produce it, yeah. which, is, which is, again, kind of paradoxical. You know. And coming back to this point, uh, so make ready. Uh, so the paper, the white paper runs into the press and uh, so-called bad sheets, mm -hmm. what are for us the good sheets, are tumbling out on a pallet. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a quantity of maximum 200, 300, sheets yeah and then uh, you have a constant result for the next 1000 sheets to be printed as a fine art book so the paper is white the text sits nicely uh, in black on the paper and the photos have a photorealistic um, uh, impression mm. so this make ready paper is in a certain way also limited because when the so-called good sheets are coming out of the press stabilized. we are stabilized uh, we stop the process and we took in the next page at the end uh, the whole pr process uh, leads in to a series of 700 800 books not more mm. So um, it is also a paradox that uh, we are using just the garbage. Mm -hmm. The garbage limits the, the, output. the output. The output limits the print run yeah. of the book. Yeah. And uh, at the end, when we have all the bad sheet assembled to a nice book, we have a, um, a high quality, a stunning book mm. object which is limited, so not a democratic object, so yeah. only a, a, yeah, a more <clears throat> than a handful, but only a couple of hundred people can afford it. Mm. Uh, isn't it a paradox that the garbage production leads into a limited uh, edition object? I mean, that methodology obviously has its limitation, you know, it's just a byproduct of it. I mean, of course, we can still manipulate the machine to continue to print in a haphazard manner. I mean, if we want to, you know, but the idea is not to do that, you know, the idea is not to really sort of uh, trick it into doing that, you know. Yes, we can manipulate the machine a little bit, but the thing is not to destroy the machine in, in doing it, then it's counterproductive, right? But like you said, you know, it is what it is, you know. If, if, this, if it, this is what it is, then we have to accept that it can only produce that much, you know, and, and it's pointless even trying to do anything more. Exactly. So people are waiting for Berg 31, let's start. Yeah, and you and I should start the book 31 again. Yeah. And see how far we can push this to a point that we can, at least in my terms, redefine what we hold in our hands as book, which is so big a luxury to be able to hold a nice book as opposed to a tablet or computer, you know. I think moving in the future to, process, to possess a beautiful book that was made 50 years ago, 100 years ago, and to see that we actually thought about it and we tried to, to open up, you know, uh, a discourse on, on bookmaking and what defines a book. I think it's something valuable we're adding to the world. You know, I don't, I don't think it's an indulgence. I think it's something that we want to bring to the world, born to the world, so that the future generation can can maybe take it on forward. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Garrett. <laughs> <coughs> Good.